Let me tell you something, nobody is richer than me. I'm the wealthiest person in the world right now. I am the wealthiest person in the world. Hi, welcome back to Chef and Stewart. This is Carrie, and today I'm gonna be giving you a recipe for one of my most popular and most shared blog posts. This is sorrel drink. Also called Jamaican sorrel, also called Agua de Jamaica, Florida Jamaica, Zobo drink. Listen, Rosella, this is absolutely phenomenal. This took me like three days to make and fill. because I am not using dried sorrel. There is so much I have to share with you, but you got to take a look. This is one of the reasons why they call me the doyen of entertaining at home because really I know how to make people have a good time by giving them a welcome drink. You see a drink when you go to somebody's home welcomes them, tells them, hey, you are invited here, come on in, shalom. This is my space and I'm delighted to have you. You are welcome to stay. If somebody comes to your house and you give them nothing to drink, it means that you don't really want them there. So make this, and the beauty of this dish, this, this recipe, is that you can actually keep it in your fridge for like a year, two years. It will be on a slow ferment, and I promise you it will taste that much better as it goes along. So right now is March, and if you made it now, by December, yours will be boss. But even so, you would have some in your fridge so that whenever somebody comes by, even unannounced, you could take a little bit in a tumbler with some ice, and then you'd serve them a drink that they wouldn't have normally and it would be so intense that it would be really rather special so you wouldn't have to pour a lot for it to go a long way how about that for a tip so this whole story was inspired again by my friend Lawrence Cortar who is a hobby fisherman but he also has a farm that he started he called and said Carrie I have sorrel I've got sorrel growing and it's time to harvest and I have some for you I'm like what I got into my car immediately went with my son and we went and collected. He gave us quite a few things the last time as well. And he also gave us really great okra. That was the one that inspired my dish, the Jamaican steamed fish with crackers and okra. That was so absolutely wonderful. The okra was huge and so tender and soft. I've never actually had okra like that. So you need to check out this recipe. It's on the blog chefandstewart.com as well as I'll leave a link in the um description box to that recipe for that chef and steward steamed fish with okra jamaican style yummy deliciousness and so that's what led to this look at this this is what i got a bag of fresh 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 sorry if you want to learn how to redeem christmas and thanksgiving and really come off like a boss stick around to the end of this video because by then you're gonna know how to make sorrel like a pro how do you like your sorrel leave a comment in just below and let me know do you like your sorrel with alcohol if if with alcohol what kind of alcohol do you use rum if rum red or white rum and if you use wine or and if you what kind of wine do you use i have my own specialty and my own recommendation but you'll have to watch to see what it is that i recommend and what i like the most I forgot just how funny this sorrel peeling was, it's literally. It took me right back to my childhood up in the hills of Moko Clarinon in Stewarton. I tell you with my grandparents picking lots and lots of sorrel and then we're trying to help as kids and then everybody starts to scratch all over because you're itching, 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 itching. But I use gloves and this time I kept my kid away, you see? he better love me like he better love me long time long 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 time how are some of your favorite ways to consume hibiscus i also have it as a tea i have it all the time i have the teas all the time but this way with the drink fresh and all i just wanted to do something special for you because you know we have a thing going on don't we 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 we, we, we always have things hey did you subscribe please do so right now and turn on all your notifications so that you can know whenever i post and you can help out a sister with the youtube algorithms yeah we want to get to 4,000 watch hours very soon so that we can start getting into youtube partnership thank you for all who have participated in this channel growing this channel we've grown so much in the past few months 
I'm blessed because of you. And your presence here is why this thing is running, so thank you. How about I teach you a papiamento word today? Dushi. Dushi, D-U-S-H-I, means sweet. You could also mean sweetheart, or it could mean tasty, like sabroso in Spanish. So if something is presented to you in an Aruban home and you can say, mmm, douchey. Yeah, so when you come to my house and I give you this sorrel drink, you'll say, hey, Carrie, douchey. Or you can say about Carrie because it is really true about me and my personality. Carrie is douchey. Yeah. Look at this. Let me tell you something, nobody is richer than me. I'm the wealthiest person in the world right now. I am the wealthiest person in the world. Let us get this into focus. That's right. That's the autofocus in the Canon EOS R for you. And that is the petal. And if you notice, it, the hole is not quite... There's a hole at the bottom. And what goes in the bottom is so I would have taken out let's for argument's sake this from here so you cut off the bottom and then release the part and so I'm going to show you how I do all of this because many of you who have sorrel or hibiscus or karkadi it's called in India You've only seen the dried forms. It's also called hibiscus in Egypt. It's very popular. Really great for a whole bunch of different. Also have the recipe for this drink made with a dried one on the blog, but I'm gonna show you chefandstore.com, which is one of my most shared posts as well. But I'm gonna show you this, the video, and I'm gonna attach this video as well to that post. So you're gonna have like a really comprehensive post with video as well as the recipe. So I'm gonna give you the link for that post in the description box. So this is usually had in Jamaica around Christmas time, so Christmas, New Year's. That's when it's had because that's when it's harvested. We've only used this fresh traditionally in Jamaica. We don't export, we just drink it all up. But the funny thing is, it wasn't until I left Jamaica that I really, 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 we, we actually do have it dry, that's not true. We do have it dried. Some people, my mother has dried because my mother is one woman who can preserve. She's just a phenomenal. One day you'll actually meet her on the channel. But listen, this is usually had fresh. I haven't had this fresh in 12 years because I haven't been home, 12 or 13 years, I haven't been home for Christmas in about that, uh, that long. That's, that's really sad, right? So, um, I'm missing fresh sorrel and I'm really excited about this and I'm so thrilled to be able to give you this video. Stick around so we can go all the ins and outs and I'll show you how to do it. And yeah, there are some tricks to it. It's, I remember yesterday I started it. I'll show you what I am actually looking at, like right in front of it. And when I started, I remember exactly why it is that as children, we didn't like to peel this. I'll give you tips, get a pair of gloves, and follow me. So now I am pretty much taking a paring knife, a very sharp paring knife, and using the tip and making a score around the base of each petal and then pulling and removing. And that's what I'm doing repeatedly. So this process is one that would usually take days and you know you everybody would be just gathered together helping out because there'd be pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds so that's the petal the pod the, the seed pod coming out there and those pods are green another one another green pod and sometimes the pods are dry like this one and then when the pods are dry they're or probably already open or cracked open sometimes even fully open and then you can see the seeds right here and the seeds are what are saved for replanting so you never actually get fresh sorrel to buy in the market or wherever in the marketplace um, with the seeds inside the pods are usually taken out and how you usually buy them is just the petals as you will see what I have at the end of this process 
I'm comparing now for you the difference between green pods and pods that have started to dry up. The ones that have started to dry up have a separation in them. Have the, the pods are opening, cracking up, revealing the seeds. And you see, these seeds are really where the magic happens. So save your seeds. If you end up getting the pods, save your seeds to replant because this is a gift that keeps on giving. So not only did my friend Lawrence give me a bag of sorrow, but he also gave me sorrow in perpetuity. You see, it is a seed that replenishes. Pretty much like God's word, no? The word come, becomes seed and it, when the seed falls into the ground and it, it, it's planted and it becomes, it takes root and it becomes a tree and the tree bears fruit. So these are really great seeds. And of course, you know that I started my kitchen garden last year, so sorrel is very, very bushy. So it's also a great hedge plant as well if you want some privacy. So you can plant it along your fence line uh, or to get some shade on parts of your garden. This is what I realized and I remembered I needed to put on gloves because I'll show you why in a second. I started itching. And I, it wasn't until I started itching. And so these gloves are food handling gloves. Uh, they're for other purposes, but make certain that the gloves you're using are good for handling gloves. So yesterday I started scratching. And when I started scratching, when I was doing this, then I realized, oh yeah, it brought me right back to being a kid outside in Moko, up in Stewartown with grandma and grandma and papa and everybody peeling sorrel and why us kids hated the whole we love to drink the sorrel but peeling sorrel was a disaster because we'd always be scratching so how beautiful are these petals i keep on playing with them because i just can't believe that i have fresh sorrel and so these are the things that make you itch that make you scratch and make you itchy and then you have to scratch those little hairs and i'm gonna show you them up close if you see the little spiky things those little spiky almost white things that glisten in in the light those little hairs are what will make you itch like crazy so it's best to wear gloves maybe even wear an apron as well and take off the clothes that you've used while doing this immediately and take a shower otherwise you will be itching for days. Do not go and lie down in your bed. So I still have all of this. I took some out of the bag, but I still have the entire bag to go through. And I wanted to share this process with you. I'm fast forwarding it because this is how traditionally, these are the bonding times. When we grow our own foods, the harvesting, the reaping, the preparation, the processing of the foods is yet another way to bond together. I'm showing you now how you can actually break the, um, remove the petals without a knife. So if you didn't have a knife or you didn't want to use a knife, perhaps if there's younger kids you don't want to give knives to, they could put on gloves and they could do it this way. So... If you want it to be on a knife, just simply tear it apart. You will get the the petals look pretty much like what the dried petals look like in the marketplace. They're not whole, they're not as pretty, but it it still does the same thing. If you want them to be pretty, though, you would have to use a knife. But it can be done without a knife. It could also be done with an implement, which is a tool with a barrel like pipe to make that score on the bottom but i don't have that so i use my knife and i'm showing you just how to use your fingers but i don't find this to be very efficient so i'll be going back to my knife in no time because i find this to be the quickest way for me and plus i get to preserve that beautiful flower that beautiful petal which is just absolutely gorgeous to me and different varieties of hibiscus, sorrel, rosella, florida, jamaica will come with different patterns. Some are dark red, some are red and white, some are red, white, and green. Some are even white completely. And the pigment, the, the level of pigment in the petal affects the final drink color, of course. So a dark red pigment will give you a dark red drink. And if you dry it, it will also intensify the pigment as well. 
I didn't have enough to dry, quite frankly. This is not enough sorrel too. If I had like maybe three times as much of this, then I would dry some. But I've just made enough from this to do a slow ferment for the end of the year and some to use in, in the meantime. And this process took me, I would say, a few hours. You have to play music. You have to be busy doing something. I always play music and dancing while I was filming as well. I did a live video on my Instagram. You should find me on Instagram at Chef and Steward. Again, these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful buds. Beautiful, beautiful petals. They're so gorgeous. I'm really amazed at how wonderful nature is, you know. One of the things about being able to to be so intimate with the growing and reaping and harvesting process and even the, the processing of, of, of food is that you really tend to appreciate a lot more just how intricate this whole thing is. And I'm showing you now a version. This is the dried sorrel hibiscus tea or sorrel or Florida Jamaica. And this is what's sold in tea, in, um, tea, in tea bag format. Um, I have this all the time. It's really great for your blood pressure, by the way. It's a natural antioxidant, very high in uh, vitamin C as well. It's so good for so many different things. It really lowers your blood pressure really very quickly and keeps it stable. So I'm going to break this open and show you what the bags individually look like. And so if you wanted to dry your soil, whether in a dehydrator or in the sun, you could do that. And then you could grind it into this and make your own tea bags. So that's a further way to process. So this is what's inside the sorrel tea bag. It's pretty much just the dried petals that have been ground up. That's fresh and that's the tea. That's a tea bag, dried, and that's fresh, and that's the tea bag. And then I continue, because it is a process. And this is probably why people don't do these things anymore, because, you know, these things are time-consuming, but it took me all the way back to my childhood. So I really still enjoyed the process of breaking it down, cutting down the thing, removing it, and furthermore, I'm just so happy that I got seeds to plant. So I'm gonna start growing sorrel for the very first time in my own life. How awesome is that? And I'm not living in Jamaica where things, where these are very easily accessible. So I'm going to plant as much as possible. I also need to see how much water they need as well. Oh look, I got leaves on this one. I wanted to show you the leaves. Just some leaves left off of the plant. But yeah, this whole process is, is just so awesome. So put on some good music, put on something you like to hear and have a good jam because listen to me, the end is gonna be worthwhile. So sorry we usually have in Christmas time and along with our general Christmas cake or fruit cake. Uh, and it is rich, usually many people use it with, um, we infuse with, with spices like allspice which is native to jamaica and the best allspice is from jamaica i will say that in every video because it's true and we also add cloves as well just a few cloves and we also infuse with ginger in the brewing process not too much ginger i find that especially since i like to ferment mine i don't want to to have an overwhelming ginger flavor in my in my soil i want ginger and even the other spices to be and it, you know like accents as opposed to being the thing that is most prominent in terms of flavor profile so we have this and of course there are many benefits i told you about before in terms of vitamin c and so on the scientific research council in jamaica which is a body that does all of the research regarding things like food and packaging and so on they say that soil contains a wide range of essential vitamins and minerals and there's a group of compounds called flavonoids 
which not only give its deep red color, but acts as a powerful antioxidant, which scavenges the body of free radicals that can cause deadly diseases. So the research done from Jamaican's uh, NCU Northern Caribbean University has also revealed that sorrel can kill certain types of cancer cells. Again, this is due to the high levels of flavonoids that work as a deterrent against certain kinds of cancer. Sorrel is also used as a diuretic in India, Africa and Mexico and has benefits for kidney health when ingested daily. So that's very useful to know. According to the Jamaican Gleaner in some parts of Africa, the red calyx of the sorrel is used to relieve coughs while the leaves are made into a poultice to relieve boils and abscesses. Sorrel has been proven to reduce the risk of heart disease by lowering blood, bad cholesterol and helping to prevent clogged arteries. As a plant with significant amounts of vitamin E, sorrel can help to improve poor eyesight and prevent age-related ocular degeneration. Ingesting sorrel regularly helps to optimize the body's immune system and prevent illness due to its high vitamin C content. Sorrel also has significant levels of iron, which helps to improve circulation throughout the body by boosting red blood cell production and oxygen levels in all vital organs. I'm going to be washing this three times. So this is the first wash and I'm sorting as well. This is the second wash. I wanted just to make certain that it's washed really properly. So I washed the sink, cleaned the sink, sterilized the sink, and I'm using the sink to wash again for the second wash, then I will drain and have a third wash again afterwards. And after this, I'm while this is happening, I'm going to I'm boiling water and infusing that water with allspice or piment as we call it in Jamaica and some cloves and some ginger. Again, you can get the printable recipe for this drink on my blog chefandsteward.com and you, I'll leave the link for that in the description box as well as pin it in one of the comments. So you'll be able to access it quite easily because here I'm just demonstrating it but the actual printable recipe is on chefandsteward.com which I'll leave that link to. So washing, 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 wash, 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 all the troubles away. Oh yeah, there's a song like that actually. And the thing is boiling, bringing that thing up to temperature. And so afterwards, I'm going to just steep this in the hot water, leave it overnight. And by the time I'm done with it, I use an eight quart pot, stock pot, all clad eight quart stock pot uh i will show you what it looks like you can buy it on amazon it's such a really great stock pot because it has it's you you can make soup it's big enough to hold a whole chicken to make stock as well so i decided that i was gonna make you a big batch the traditional way with sugar brown cane sugar and all that but I was also gonna make another batch with a in a low carb version. Now that's special. So I had this thing brewing overnight and then I strained it and this is what's left out of my stock pot. Yeah, my camera died so I didn't have the bandages of that, but you can get the point. And so this is what's left over of the strained portion. This is, you can see even some of the spices inside some cloves as well as um, the allspice. And I have two, one, two jars. I have this jug, which is large and I've strained it for the first time. I'm going to add brown cane sugar and I like mine to be very sweet. So I add three heaping, four tablespoons heaping here, but I'm still gonna mix and 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 mix to make certain that all of the sugar is dissolved. This is a process that it's important to add sugar. I find that since I'm also going to do a slow ferment, it needs the sugar for the fermentation process. Otherwise it will go off. So you can always add water afterwards, 
when you're serving or serve with a lot of ice and if you take alcohol this is about the time you would al add alcohol the recipe on the blog calls for rum jamaican rum but can i tell you my preference my preference is actually not rum my personal preference is actually red wine i find it produces a much milder much more flavorful profile and then you might find some of these extra petals again it's the first strain so i would strain again before decanting into a jar and when i'm going to store i'm not going to store in plastic um i'm going to store in something that will allow it to breathe otherwise you will have gases happening and then things can explode so it's important to store it in the right container um if you're going to have it for long in the fridge and if you're going to store it in airtight containers be very meticulous about opening it up from time to time to release any gases that build up in the process but this is how i prefer to do it i'm again going to add more sugar because it needs more sugar and mix again it's a process that goes by taste and again i err on the side of sweet and this i'm doing this large batch with sugar the traditional way and the small batch i've decided i'm going to sweeten with probably sucralose which is the one sweetener that does not have an aftertaste because i don't want to affect the flavor profile uh even though there are better uh, much better much healthier low carb sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia for sure i i'm gonna try with i'm gonna try with 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 sucralose and i will also see what it tastes like with with um with the others so that would give you a low carb version of this drink and of course if you're going to go low carb you could still use rum or alcohol according to what your dietary needs are uh, generally speaking this is served as an alcoholic beverage in jamaica it always uh, has alcohol the amount of alcohol will vary according to the person who's making it and the taste of the person whether or not many children are going to be consuming it um, but yet traditionally we put rum in our ice cream rum in our cake and rum in our sorrel at christmas time and it's just enough to flavor we cook with alcohol we're from a sugar producing country so rum is part of our culture and it has nothing to do with you know religious stuff it's just just how we cook so again i'm going to taste using a spoon and i'm showing you how to taste safely don't use the same spoon please do not use the same spoon that you're mixing things with to taste so i wanted to show you that on camera because some people actually do that and that's actually not hygienic at all so use tasting spoons liberally while you are in the tasting process do not use a spoon that you're using to actually make the recipe and so you continue to stir to make certain that all the sugar is dissolved the crystals on brown cane sugar are thicker than on like a like a processed white granulated sugar then you put the cover on and refrigerate continue to watch and watch and watch to your heart's content as well as give me ideas as to what you want me to work on go to my blog chefandstore.com look on all my recipes and tell me which ones you want me to make videos of because your voice matters on this channel much love and blessings keep on watching don't go anywhere see you in the next video where are you going i said see you in the next video See you in the next video where are you going i said see you in the next video do not let me bring out my jamaican mom don't don't where's my jamaican granny mm -mm. a little joke yeah see you in the next video